So this is going to be a demonstration of the Delphix Dynamic Data Platform Administrator View. I'll go through some of the functionality that you have um, for this demonstration. So what you see here is the login dashboard and it kind of gives you a quick view of the storage capacity being used and what's remaining and any kind of critical faults there may be as you can see and then any kind of performance sets. So within Delphix you've seen this many times and that is we take items from production we ingest them into the Delphix engine and then we provision to non-production. Right? So those production environments tend to what we, be, we call source. Sometimes they're not actual production environments. They may be a standby database, Oracle Data Guard or something like that. So, but we call those sources. And this particular source environment is where all our oracles are. You have a source environment for Windows where all our Windows sources are. So quickly to look at this screen, you'll see that there's going to be an operating system user that needs to be created on that um, Linux server. And that operating user um, can log in through SSH, can have a username or password, or it can be passwordless, depending on how it's set up and what your choices are. Once you have this created, you can configure and you know kind of run the information through the Delphix engine. It's going to go discover the various databases that may, may be on that server that are running. In this case, we have an Oracle 12.1 database running. Um, actually, several. Let's see what we have. No, no, we have one database running there. Um, but we have several installations of the Oracle. We have Postgres installation found. We have some unstructured files. Again, remember, we can actually virtualize unstructured files, and it happens often with our customers. This is the ability to keep the application that might be on a mount point, say a Java or an Apache app, it's connecting to a database and keeping those two in sync as they move around the virtualization and building environments. Target is very similar. Now, there are some elevated privileges required on the target, and that would be the ability to mount file systems onto that target server. And these elevated privileges are well defined in our online documentation at docs.delphix.com. <laughs> very similar, you'll see we have a user, we've connected, we can synchronized to the different um, databases that might be on, different installations. In this case, we have some of the virtual databases running, as you can see, um, at least into this Oracle home. Similar with the Windows, difference with Windows is you're going to be using a domain account. And then you'll, within the databases, you'll be able to see multiple installations, instances, and then the databases that fall under each of those instances. This particular one has one instance. But if it was multiple instances, you would have more. You can manually add or you can synchronize uh, with a refresh and actually pull the latest information in. Similar to targets, again, you'll have your domain, and domain and login account connects to the target server. Some elevated privileges here, it's going to need to be able to mount through iSCSI, those mount points, and you'll have to run PowerShell in order to get that taken care of. So again, take a look at those uh, elevated privilege requirements on docs.delphix.com. And it'll have all the various instances and the databases associated to those instances all the way down the line. With, after which you have the data sets, and the data sets are pretty much the virtual assets that Delphix is going to imagine, uh, the manage. So in this case, you have the break fix environments. You have the Delphix that have been set up for self-service. You have your production, your sources, and any kind of UAT. So in this case, you have the Oracle source and the Sweet CRM source, which is actually a database. All right, and as you can see, back in October, we ingested the very first time. And at this point, we've been taking periodic uh, snapshots Low incremental backups, this one looks like several, right? Could have been as often as a log file sync, um, at which case, you know, you can pick any one of these times or any time in between to provision your database to. If you wanted to take a snapshot like I'll do now is I just take this. This is a full copy. I can do a forced compression, most recent or full differential backup. So within SQL Server, we can actually just ingest the backup file. Don't actually have to go out and take a backup of the database itself. In this case, I'm going to take a full backup of the database. 
and you'll see that you'll, it'll jump into this case. If I were to create a new virtual database, right, I would have to add a data set and it'll tell me, you know, add a D source, create B files, and in which case I'd be able to pick or provision a virtual database. So there's different things I can do here. From the action screen, you can see that I'm running the current backup for this sweet CRM. It's extracting the information and then it's going to actually apply to this particular timeline. And at that timeline, I'll be able to provision from there. And I'll show you that once this is complete. And while that's moving uh, to completion, it's not taking a very long time. Um, you'll see that we can watch jobs. Okay. This is showing you that we're doing a DB sync. We're showing that we did some masking jobs uh, that we ran across. You can do some searching. You can have um, any alert events that might be running. Um, the job completes however you want, how you want to have those alerts. These alerts can be sent to an email address if needed. Let's get back to our data sets since that job has completed show you what it looks like now on that timeline. And as you can see, May 17th. At this point, I can provision a brand new environment. Right? Just by clicking that, this is going to go, it's, obviously it's not going to let me put a SQL Server on an Oracle source. So I'll have it go to the Oracle target. If I had multiple instances, I'd be able to select. I'm going to apply this to the break fix group. I'll just call this test. I'll go with a simple recovery mode. I can make it very complex if I wanted, but it's going to be simple for this. Pre and post scripts. This is where you can add some custom scripting. And then enable. So when the instance or servers come online, go ahead and enable the database to restart. Snapshot policy. How often do I want this um, automatically to go out and take the latest and greatest copy? I'll just go with the default, which is 3 a.m., but you can certainly customize these to work around the current backup schedules that your DBAs may be running today. If I wanted masking associated to this job, I would be able to find the masking job from Delphix Engine. This, was, this is from our also masking solution that is fully integrated with this provisioning. And I'd pick which one I want to assign. And I'm not going to assign one, but I would pick at this point which one it would be. At this point, I can add hooks, and that's, tell, that's also telling you, say, when I configure this clone, there's specific things I might want to do. So, for instance, configuring a clone, I might want to have a, a script that anytime I configure a clone to go out and update our configuration management database, let them know there's a new database out there where it is. Pre-refresh, so if I refresh this environment, maybe I want a script that says, shut the application down gracefully, then go get a refresh, right? Once you refresh, run the post script that might be lock out production users and add development users. Modify those database links that would be pointing to production after the refresh and make those point to development. Similar pre-rollback, maybe, oh, and then of course you want to start the app. Pre-rollback, stop the application. Roll it back to your point in time. Maybe grab something from, you know, CICD. Go out there and grab something from your release code so that you can get the latest release applied, whatever it might be. Post rollback is to go ahead and um, start up those applications. Pretty much this is our CI CD or DevOps process flows automation, if you will, that allows future for those self-service aspects because all these activities that DBAs generally perform uh, manually or even have scripts for, they, they are then built into the whole process itself, which allows developers, QA testers down the line to press one button and it filters through this workflow. Afterwards, you're going to see a summary environment, double check everything works, and you'll submit your job. Delphix is now actually going to be mounting. I'll run this in the background and show you what you have here. It's going to be mounting those D drive program files, new database name. It's going to mount those files. It's going to generate the recovery scripts. What Delphix Virtualization Engine is actually doing is running um, Typical MSSQL commands that are required when you refresh a database, making sure it's working with the master database, making sure the point in time is set, making sure all the, all the commands that are normally handled, again, by the database are happening in this time. Very similar in any environment, whether it's Oracle or Postgres, Delphix is 
eliminating those needs that are required from the DBA, those commands that are needed. And it will report success or failure based on what you need. If it fails this particular process for who knows what reason, you can have that alert your um, end user, your requester, or maybe the DBA that indicates this particular database um, failed its, its refresh or whatever it might have been. After it refreshes the database, it's going to run an initial snap sync that you can always get to this point in time, any kind of further events and activities. While that's running there, I'll show you some of the other items that are in the Delphix Management Console, performance analytics of the Delphix. Again, all of this information I'm showing you is web service API enabled. You can have this integrate with, um, with your site scope, right? You can have this integrate with any of those uh, technologies, um, Splunk, for instance, any of that type of stuff that's going to be able to read these screens, read the outputs, and then present them in a kind of an enterprise format. You can remove the disk I.O., you can remove the network. Looks like our job is completed. Just take a look at my data sets and notice that I have this particular database which is now running. The last thing I want to show you is the storage capacity. And I want to show you that Delphix, um, where it's actually saving the information uh, in terms of storage, the saving, storage savings. What you have in Delphix is when you ingest a D source from a source environment, you're going to see a compression. In databases, we tend to see about a two-thirds reduction in storage usage as it compresses, deduplicates, and removes that white space. In file systems, more of 75, 80, 80%, it's so about 25% reduction. Not as much, certainly. What you're going to see, um, in this case, let me see if I can find my... Uh, what can I see? I'm going to see on my D source here. As you can see on my D source, I have 2.3 gigabytes for that particular D source. In this D source, which is probably the um, Oracle, and this one's probably the SQL Server. It's not really clear. I don't want to move my screen too much. 12.93. That's important. That's already been compressed, right? But what I want to show you is when I create a new virtual database which is this one that I just created, which is not available, it's still updating the screen. But you can see that in this case, I went from a virtual database of, say, what is it, this 50.52 megabytes. And let me just see which one this is associated to down here. If I can scan, if I can pull this out, because I really need to show you what I'm looking at. It's not going to show. I can't. Oh, maybe it's here. Oh, there it goes. All right, here, much better. I'll squeeze these guys in so that you can see what it is. Okay, so here's what we have. We have the current size of 666.28 megabytes. And this is that Aura source one. So let's go find an Aura database. Let's see, where is my Oracle? Here it is, down here. All right, and then the current copy size is down here on megabytes. And it's going to show you the actual savings of 3.5%. Now, within this information, as you can see from the Delphix data sets. All right, we have data going all the way back from October 5th. And realistically, most organizations keep about two weeks. We're not going to keep that much data. But as you, it's, so we have what's called um, policies, in which case you can indicate you know, a retention policy of, in this case, one year, it looks like is a default, but you can certainly keep them, you know, more realistic and keep them about two weeks or less. So that is it for my demonstration on the Delphix virtual, virtualization. The next demonstration will be on replication and then the Jetstream or self-service interface.